Before I start, I have to make it clear because there is an apparent illiteracy slash listening problem online. I do not feel personally owed anything from Valve. I don't feel that TF2 players are owed anything beyond the game being functional. If you've come here to comment that Valve doesn't owe us anything, then you're clearly just not paying attention. Stop gooning for five minutes and listen as I repeat this. I don't believe we are owed anything from Valve. There's discourse now revolving around TF2 players being quote-unquote entitled or behaving like spoiled brats. Of course, most of this comes from misinformed people commenting on something they know nothing about, and Implement goes into further detail about this and discusses it much more calmly than I could. Needless to say, people giving their opinions about this are about as knowledgeable on the subject as Biden is on his current location. It shouldn't have to be debated at all, but I think it should be more widely vocalized. It's not entitlement to want a game to be functional. It's not entitlement to expect a game to stay supported while still making money. I'll go ahead and address some of the common arguments as to why TF2 doesn't deserve an update, along with general discourse. The game is old, number one. This is by far the most common argument I see, and it means nothing. Yes, TF2 is 17 years old. My viewer base is predominantly 18 to 24 years old. This game is almost as old as most of my viewers. This isn't an argument, though. TF2 makes annually over $12 million, and Valve can makes countless billions from Steam and their other games. I'd get it if TF2 was a money pit, where Valve is essentially dumping more than they get out. But that isn't the case. Valve has made their money back from TF2 ten times over from what they put in and continue to do so. For the amount of money Valve makes from TF2 alone, they can afford to hire a round-the-clock team to put out new content on a yearly basis, and not even begin to put a dent into the money they make from it. This is all regardless of the quality of new cosmetics and maps as well. Valve can add whatever garbage they want and still make money. The reason why Valve willingly chooses not to work on TF2 is something I'll get to later. 2. Valve is working on new projects. And, so what if they are? Do other game companies just abandon their games for years on end while still actively making money off of them just because they're working on new games? No, no company does that willingly if they value their customers. This point also plays into how Valve operates, which I'll talk about later. 3. TF2 players are toxic. This is something that's entirely subjective, and means virtually nothing due to its overuse. Being toxic is a mean-nothing term now. Now it varies, of course, but toxicity is typically an environment that, for whatever reason, encourages players in some way to get angry. Whether that be winning in-game, gaining the winners, rewards, or rank-ups, or saving the player time on grinding things in-game. Think of games like Counter-Strike, Dota, League of Legends, Rust, Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, on and on. Notice how these games are highly competitive and sanitized. This modern idea of toxicity, as mentioned, is subjective. What I believe to be toxic isn't going to be what everyone considers toxic. Of course, this modern groupthink idea of toxicity is anything unsanitized. A space where people can speak freely. These types are highly offended at the idea that others can make an off-kilter joke or comment on, a, on certain subjects as they deem fit. Just the idea upsets them, not even witnessing it personally. It is a matter of opinion, and it might be just correlation rather than causation, but I can't help but believe TF2 has lasted this long because it is so casual and it is so unrestricted in its player's expression. Think of almost any modern competitive game with a highly moderated and sanitized community. Most don't last long beyond a few years, and retain very little players until the game eventually shuts down. Even Overwatch lost so many players, Blizzard tried saving it by making a sequel. There's nothing really to gain in TF2 by winning, beyond satisfaction of victory. Of course, even this causes people to get sweaty and angry, but that I won't deny, but significantly less so than modern game slop. TF2 is casual by design, and most of the player base knows this. They aren't here to grind rank, they aren't here to win big in an esports tournament. They're here to play the game. 
Now about user expression and user-generated content. Most quote-unquote toxicity in TF2 boils down to easily offended Tumblrites and cultural Marxists angry at the fact people can say whatever they want. Well, yeah, sometimes people get mad for no reason and will call you countless slurs for having the audacity to use a black box and the conch together or using the scorch shit. Most of the toxicity argument in TF2 goes out the window with a mute button. I've, of course, talked about this in my video about Jannies, but it bears repeating. The mute button exists. It's right here. You can mute anyone on the enemy team and your team. Is someone calling you names? Mute them. Is someone playing annoying music? Mute them. Is the enemy team talking shit? Mute them. To add to this, you can now disable user-generated content entirely. So now you aren't forced to look at whatever weird variety of pornography, stupid fucking meme from Reddit, or some ugly fursona. The player has the tools necessary to combat in-game toxicity in TF2. Even with all that said, TF2's community being toxic isn't really an argument. Almost every mainstream game I mentioned earlier is sweaty and toxic, and still gets regular content slash balance changes. Does anyone question this? No, not at all. Why is TF2 unique in this regard? The reality is, it's not. TF2 is no different community-wise to these games aside from the lack of in-game moderation. That's it. There's no difference aside from TF2 players free to speak their mind, which unmasks this cultural Marxist dog whistle Toxic has become. Those three points are usually the arguments you see, and I don't recall seeing any others. If you shoot down one of them, they'll shift the goalposts per usual. To make a subject that could be spoken about for hours condensed, Valve has a terrible way of operating, and makes for an inefficient and ineffective means of developing slash maintaining games in the modern age. Most of the anti-TF2 arguments always fall back onto TF2's burnout slash spaghetti code slash employees wanting to move on to other things. These arguments are shut down by the simple fact that this is Valve's own fault. TF2 had never had the same team working on it since its release. The team has been ever-changing. Almost everyone at Valve has at some point worked on TF2. It's not like it's one team that has been continuously and non-stop working on TF2 for the last 17 years. For fuck's sake, the last seven virtually no one had been at at all. I'd get it if it were though, but the TF2 dev team has essentially been a revolving door where employees were free to come and go as they please. Which sounds like a good thing, but in practice has become a problem for Valve as a whole. To describe the way Valve function is a little complicated, but can be understood easily. Essentially, Valve employees can work whatever project they want to, at any time. Sounds good, right? If this was it, then there wouldn't be a problem, except it isn't. Valve has an employee scoring system they do, in which employees score each other based on performance, the projects they work on, and no doubt their behavior in office. This peer scoring system is the primary reason nothing at Valve gets done. Combined with no clear hierarchy, there's no real incentive to do anything either. TF2's famous spaghetti exists because of this peer scoring system. To summarize, employees are, or now were, incentivized into making their code as cryptic as possible in order to make them irreplaceable because they've essentially done the coding equivalent of writing cave language on your test. This is the only reason TF2 has spaghetti code. Now the new Valve employees that would be willing to risk their peer score on TF2 have to decrypt the ancient hieroglyphs of good Valve to even hope to add anything to the game or to change balances. Only encouraging employees to avoid TF2 even more. On top of the spaghetti code, you have a lack of proper hierarchy and direction at Valve. Employees essentially get to wander around the office until they find a project they want to work on, which is usually whatever the new tech slash toy Valve is working on. Valve used to hire employees to work on projects specifically, which is why their old games were so good. Half-Life Alex was the only main game, as in not a spin-off, that new Valve has actually made, and it's just one big retcon because all the good writers left. Employees are only encouraged to work on whatever is new and shiny, and abandon whatever isn't that. Needless to say, but this leads to nothing getting done in a timely manner, combined with the absolute radio silence 
and valve fins are permanently left in the dark. This is all subjective, and everyone will have an opinion on it. I personally believe that many are just uninformed normal fags that are upset that people have the gall to tell a company no. The idea that you shouldn't be a consumer who blindly accepts slop is very upsetting for people who can't think for themselves. This modern idea that consumers aren't allowed to criticize or boycott companies is why the gaming industry is in such bad shape. It's why we have so many DEI shovelware, why FIFA and Madden games are the same game every year but buggier, and why games are always greedy cash grabs with microtransactions being shoved into your face at every point possible. This stupid fucking idea, readily accepted by e-slebs and the drones that follow them, that you aren't allowed to question the multi-billion dollar company. These types are the ones calling you entitled, gaslighting you by calling you a Karen or a spoiled brat. Guess what? Welcome to capitalism. This is how it works. You pay for goods or services, and if you don't like said good or service, you stop paying for it and find someone else to replace it. Let's make a hypothetical example. Let's say you're an avid Coca-Cola enjoyer. You drink Coke often. One day, Coke unexpectedly changes their formula, and it tastes bad. You, as the consumer, don't want to, nor have to, continue buying Coke. You can go on to one of the many alternatives. Perhaps Pepsi, or RC, or maybe even a store brand, or regional cola. You vote with your wallet. I can hear it, though. There is no alternative to TF2. That analogy doesn't apply. And you're right. There isn't anything even close to TF2. Anything that is close is a pale imitation that can't hope to compare, which defeats many of the arguments the anti-TF2 crowd has. It'd be one thing if there was something else to play, but there isn't. You have TF2, or you have nothing. One of the biggest factors that contributes to the negative discourse the TF2 player base has towards Valve is this fact. This is why TF2 players are so particularly loud about their game. This is very often brought up, and even Implemon had it in his video. The fact the game has been allowed for seven years to be rendered unplayable after having two of the worst updates that made weapons useless or lose their uniqueness, attempting to turn a casual game into a competitive game by making arbitrary changes that haven't been reverted, all to appeal to an extreme minority of players and e-slebs that don't even play the real game. All of this is the game itself, nothing about Valve's way of operating. This is why TF2 players come across as entitled to outsiders that don't even pay attention to the bills being passed in their country, let alone the intricacies of TF2. TF2 is the last game of its kind with an active player base. As for Deadlock, as I know this is somewhat connected to this discussion, my opinions on Deadlock aren't good. And when it comes to a boycott, I'm divided on it. There's this idea that anyone calling for a boycott of Deadlock is evil, or some kind of bigot. I've even seen mainstream media calling it economic terrorism. Listen, Deadlock looks like shit. It is an early development, but is clearly mostly done. This isn't an acceptable game. As again, Implemon put it, it's a conceptually disgusting game. It's a mishmash of different genres that don't congeal well, and are antithetical to each other. The game, if allowed to continue in its current direction, most likely be dead on arrival. I hope Valve proves me wrong, but my point is a boycott might not even be necessary. Valve will learn regardless. Boycott it if you want, I'm neutral about it. As for boycotting TF2, you absolutely should. There's this whole Versovac sisters reaction to most of the cheating bots being dealt with, but I think it's only going to hinder TF2. Valve willingly let TF2 get like this for seven whole years and did virtually nothing the entire time. All the while, not once communicating until people started showing up to their door. The reason I bring this up is simple. We shouldn't reward Valve for doing the bare minimum. We should force Valve's hand. Make Valve either show that they will properly maintain the game or give a definitive answer if they're going to abandon the game or not. We shouldn't sit here on the edge of our seats waiting for an answer that's never coming. My belief is that we simply force Valve to decide by not paying for anything related to TF2 in a way Valve can profit from. 
If you think I'm a bigot or economic terrorist for saying this, then fine. Believe what you will. But I'm not being unreasonable here for the reasons mentioned previously in this video. The fact that I have to say this at all is sad. I've wasted enough of your time with this. But hope you can understand where I'm coming from. I don't feel owed anything from Valve. I don't expect anything from Valve. My issue arguably isn't even with Valve anymore, but these stupid fucking grifters spouting on about shit they know nothing about beyond surface level takes by a bunch of fruity fucking soy tubers. To answer the question, do TF2 players deserve an update? My answer is yes. For dealing with bots for years, with nothing from Valve in the way of communication, for destroying the game balance for e-celebs, for expecting us to pay good money every year on dog shit cosmetics. Yes, I think we deserve, not owed, an update. Valve should be thankful they have a player base for TF2 at all for putting up with their shit, and especially thankful that we pay them any amount of money for TF2 at all. Me personally, the only thing I ask for in an update is reverting the shitty balance changes made in the last three updates. I don't need new weapons, although I would like them. I don't need new maps. I don't need new cosmetics. I just want TF2 back. On a slightly unrelated note, I have a Team Fortress 2 classic server called the Dixie Dandy Vanilla server. It's vanilla, no moderation, say whatever the fuck you want, just don't cheat, nothing illegal, have fun there. I have bots on there, if the server's dead, nobody's playing, you can still play on it, maybe wait for somebody to join, but the server is there. I don't play on it too often, purely because I kind of got burnt out on TF2 Classic, but if you're hopped on there, let me know, I'll probably join, play with you for a bit. But I hope to see you guys there, it's not that expensive and I might just keep it up for the hell of it. But if you get banned by Vault F4, have fun on that server. It's there for that reason explicitly. Just for refuge from the people getting banned by the shitty fucking staff on Vault F4. But have a good rest of your day. I'm glad you watched to this uh, point in the video.